LSU Odyssey.com in the house. Everybody, take a look at the new and improved site. We've added some features on there that will make it a lot easier for subscribers, for readers. You know, and like, you know, most sites that deal with college football, breaking news and stuff, we're not just 100% subscriber only. We're heading in that direction with the more subscribers that we get, but we have always, 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 always put out the bulk of our stuff for free. So don't be thinking, oh, well, I can't read that because it's, it's, it's for charge. Chances are, if it's on our site, you know, three out of four things are for free. So definitely check that out. And uh, if, if you thought maybe I'll stay away from the site because I don't want to pay the subscription fees, I'll stick to his YouTube, understand that you're only getting really half of the picture when you watch our YouTube. You're really only getting half of the content. As much as we try and put up here, on here, the site is where it's all at. I mean, we even put these videos, we even link these videos on the site. So, you know, definitely check out the site, lsuodyssey.com. That is where all, it's where all the action is, baby. And if you were on the site, you would have seen in the last few weeks us saying, LSU are going to be getting Logan Diggs. And as far back as, uh, what was it, four or five days ago, we said, LSU will not lose this race. LSU will not lose this race for Logan Diggs. LSU are going to get this young man and return him back to the state of Louisiana. Well, today the news came out just as someone, an NFLSU Tiger had told me, just as a few members of the coaching staff had told me, LSU made it happen. Frank Wilson made it happen. Logan Diggs is going to be a Tiger. Today he committed to LSU, and it was fantastic news, fantastic news. I mean, for all the uncertainty with LSU's running back room in spring to the point where, you know, outside of Noah Kane, it was just Trey Holly getting carries and Nick Demas. Um, so you got one veteran who only transferred in the program last year. Then you had a true freshman, and then you had a walk-on getting the reps for LSU at running back. That's why you saw LSU throwing the ball so much on offense during the spring game. Combined with the beat-up offensive line and the beat-up unavailable running back, LSU kind of kept it conservative as far as the offensive line went and just uh, kept the running vanilla and just threw the ball all over the place. Which might not be a bad offensive uh, philosophy for this season considering the receivers and tight ends we're going to have on this offense. But back to what we were saying about Logan Diggs. Logan Diggs comes to this team with 822 rushing yards last year, over 200 receiving yards as well. You know, um was effective catching the football for touchdown, three touchdowns, including a 75-yarder, six rushing touchdowns. Um, this was a young man who was absolutely phenomenal last year for Notre Dame. And um, in only eight starts for Notre Dame in two years, had over, I think it was 1,057 total rushing yards and uh, nearly 300 receiving yards. So he had that first season, freshman season, didn't really play much, but then this season growing into the role, getting more reps, eight starts, looking like he's becoming that back. And this is a young man who's a Rumble High Raider, okay? So this is this is a Louisiana boy. It's fantastic to see this young man back in Louisiana. And people forget. This isn't like some crazy stretch for LSU to have signed him. Not just the fact that he's from Louisiana, but the fact that Brian Kelly has now signed this young man twice in three seasons. Twice in three seasons. First, it was to because uh, he didn't, you know, didn't want any part of the Orgeron regime. 
at LSU. Took off to Notre Dame. And then Kelly leaves. Plays there a season. Now he wants no part of Notre Dame. He wants to follow Brian Kelly. Strength and conditioning coach Jake Flint. Offensive analyst Dean Petzing. I mean, there's Kerry Cook, safeties coach. There was some... some uh, very, very integral support staff members who Logan Diggs has a really tight relationship with who are now at LSU. And the presence of Jake Flint, strength and conditioning coach, don't you dare minimize that. That had a big part to play. And so now you've got two big pieces of news for LSU over the last 48 hours. You've got five-star corner powerhouse Juwan Johnson committing to LSU something people didn't think was going to happen everyone thought he was going to Alabama and then he was committing to Colorado and then everyone thought okay I guess he's going to be at Colorado he goes there finds out it snows in Colorado and he wants no part of that and then you got Robert Steeples beating out Deion Sanders for a five-star corner that's just beautiful and now with the Logan Diggs news, any concerns over the running back room have been a little bit alleviated here, don't wouldn't you think? I mean, Logan Diggs could be that number one running back, in my opinion. And then you've had Noah Kane be durable throughout spring, 10 rushing touchdowns last year. If Josh Williams never finds his, his footing health-wise... If Armani Goodwin doesn't find his footing health-wise, or transfers, which we are hearing is still a major possibility and a story that we are all over. You know, we heard that he was maybe a little, had some trepidation towards transferring due to injuries, lack of film, wanting to kind of get that boosted before he could transfer, but I feel like there's enough there for him to transfer. I mean, he's still fantastic, phenomenal running back with that burst of pace, that power as well in the combination. I just, I love what I see from Armani Goodwin, but it's just the injuries have been in his way. And then the concerns about John Emery Jr., which we posted an update from a source as close as you can get to John Emery Jr. about his status. We've got that status update on the site for subscribers and it's a very intriguing status update considering what we've been hearing and I'm still skeptical I'm still skeptical regardless of what the source was saying to us I still feel like hey the source has some you know they could possibly be some political maneuvering that type of thing or they may just be trying to save face so it was like we'll we'll see but it was very intriguing to, to hear this status update from, from someone as close to John as, as you could find. And, that, you know, will Logan Diggs' arrival force one of those guys out? That, to me, is something that we, we, we have to pay attention to because we oftentimes see that. Everything looks comfortable, everything looks great on paper, and then you add another piece, and then, well shit, there goes my reps, I'm out of here coach, you see that happen all the time, you haven't seen it too much at Kelly's LSU but we've still lost plenty of transfers since Brian Kelly has arrived, not not really like because of Kelly or anything like that, I'm not gonna go on, on a limb with that but it's more of just, you lose guys because of everyone's different individual situations with Logan Diggs' arrival, I mean, he's already second on the team in, in career rushing yards upon arrival. Last year, we said that about Noah Kane, that he was the leader in rushing touchdowns and yards over everybody on, on roster at running back. And what's sad is we've gone a full season, and really we still can say the same for, for Logan Diggs. Still more yards than, than everybody else on in the roster. And... I think he's only second behind Noah Kane with touchdowns. It's it's pretty crazy how uh, how you know we get someone that productive from the portal. And um, sorry, I was trying to 
let an old man in a wheelchair walk in front of me, but he offered to let me go, I guess. That was strange, but trying to do the nice thing. But, um, Logan Dix, coming to LSU, huge pickup. At the same time, could LSU, like, lose a few people because of this? I think it was worth doing because, obviously, if Frank Wilson was wondering, had some concerns about that room enough to go and pursue Logan Diggs with this much. I mean, obviously, when there's great players out there, you just go pursue them no matter what. You want to stack the talent no matter what. But I have a feeling there's just something going on within that running back room that made them say, hey, we need more. And obviously it was injuries. They saw injuries. They didn't like what they saw with the injuries and the unavail- lack of availability from everybody. But still, some of that was, was beyond some of the players' control. Now, is Diggs like a direct replacement for John Emery Jr.? That's the thing is it's like Diggs or is Diggs there for perhaps preparation to not have John Emery Jr. for the season. These are all things we need to really like think about, look into, and wonder what's what's coming down the pipeline next because I'm telling you, the news is coming thick and fast and it's not stopping anytime soon. And keep it glued, LSUodyssey.com because we've got a few stories that I think we're we're close to breaking here. <laughs>